All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I have a friend on, uh, so I'm going to be chatting with my buddy Travis uh, for today, and we are going to be talking about team tournaments um, focused on AOS, but we've been playing together uh, for decades now because we're old uh, through multiple game systems, including Warhammer Fantasy and Malifaux, um, which we've done team tournaments and all of those. Um, so yeah, welcome Travis. Hi. Hello, thank you for having me. You're welcome. Thank you for indulging me and coming on the show. Is it a show? Is it a podcast? I don't know what it is. It sounds weird to call it a show. Do you have a name for your show? It's just my channel is just Astronome, my name, AOS. I don't know. Oh, you need, like a, you need name. a name for it. I, I don't have a name as good as Max Value. I will say that. That's true. Well, that one's copyrighted, so don't try and use that. Indeed. Um, do you want to give a little bit of your gaming background just as an intro? Sure. Since I mentioned so, max value. Yeah, so I'll, I'll start at the beginning. I started playing Warhammer Fantasy in 5th edition because one of my friends named Ricky got me in when I was a child. <laughs> uh, played that, um, played some 40k too. Uh, in college, I, I got... Actually. I didn't play like much 40k, but I like, you know, sure. had some space works and Shots gotcha. and blast cannon. Oh, I do remember that now. Yep. yep. Um, I got pretty competitive into Warhammer Fantasy around the time I was in college. Uh, my senior year of college, I went to the European Team Championships, uh, trips in the United States, uh, which is a big. It's basically what now has become AOS World. It's a split. Whatever. I was going to say for our our newer <laughs> war gamers who have only done AOS, it's it basically it's the equivalent of Worlds for. Yeah, it, it, it was the equivalent. Um, I did that five years actually, um, and then I then I stopped. Uh, I stopped playing Warhammer Fantasy at the start of AOS when the game pretty much died. Uh, at You're that point, I got yeah. At that point, I got big into Malifaux. Really liked Malifaux. Um, I went to a we. I did a couple team tournaments for Malifaux. Uh, we had the. Uh, uh, Bragging Rights team tournament that actually started out as a Warhammer team tournament, but switched yep. to Malifaux. Um, and then I went to the Ultimate Team Showdown, which was kind of the um, not the predecessor, which is the opposite of predecessor. Uh, An antithesis. <laughs> no. More sworn enemy. Yeah. No, it was just the follow-on. <laughs> it kidding. was just the follow-on. Um, to Bragging Rights, uh, I did that a couple years. Then we went to me and a couple of people. We went to. What was kind of sort of the world championship type thing for Malifa? It was a big team tournament. It was in England. It was in some town outside of Manchester that I forget the name of. Um, but it wasn't like a country, like one team per country. There was, oh, it was gotcha. mostly um, British teams. But a couple gotcha. of Polish teams, Swedish teams. Uh, I think there was a Norwegian uh, and Finnish team, et cetera. Anyway, uh, we won that. Go us. It's it was pretty exciting. Awesome. Um, and then so you're saying the U.S. was better in Malifaux than it has ever been in any Warhammer system. I would say so. Um, we we won the first year they had that, mm -hmm. and then the next year there was another U.S. team that finished second or third. I can't remember nice. if they were second or third. Apol apologies, Diva. I can't remember if you were <laughs> second or third, but I know you did well. Um, so yeah, we were pretty good at Malfo. Um, I really liked Malfo. I still miss it so, so did much. I. I, I did like it a lot. We, uh, I, I might have you. We, we might have to chat again at some point with an episode just to talk about Malfo, reminiscing, and like yeah. what made that a, a good game and that sort of thing. Yeah. The good news is AOS has a lot of Malifaux like qualities in it now. It and... does. And that was one of the big things I liked coming back to Warhammer. Like the like the whole objectives and battle tactics things are all very much Malifaux esque. Ele yeah. Elements from Malifaux that were not in fantasy that are now in Warhammer. Yeah, very much so. It was the same kind of thing. Killing stuff wasn't actually how you won the game. It obviously helped, but like you, you could win with no models left on the board. Yeah. So I did that. Uh, after a while, that I tried playing Ninth Age, which is like basically the fan-made version of Warhammer Fantasy. At this point, I was going to go <laughs> to ETC again in 2020 for that. Um, then you might know there was a plague. Something happened. Uh, yeah. 
yeah, so that that didn't happen. But yeah, then uh, I don't know about five months ago, six months ago, I started getting into AOS That's again. And I'm, I would say I'm still relatively new to AOS. There's a lot of stuff I don't know just because sure. I haven't played as much as I have all these other games. Yeah. But yeah, there's, uh, there's a certain level of like, I am just a competent gamer in general and know how games work. But then like on top of that, you do need just a lot of game specific knowledge of like what else is out there? What are you going to be facing? Like what can the other armies do to you <laughs> that um, that comes with just experience? Like I, I feel like that's why I never really got good at Malifaux is I just didn't play enough games to learn what everything did. So anytime I went to a tournament, I would be like, oh, you have a crew that I've never faced. I guess it's going to do stuff to me. And then I'd be like, oh, shit, that was good, huh? <laughs> I probably shouldn't have walked right into that. Yeah, Valpo was very much uh, like that. And I'll say from what I've seen in AOS, there, there's a decent bit of that. But like I, I tell people when I come to the table, be like, there's going to be stuff I don't know, but I know how to play games. Like I certainly am not like some random noob that, right. it, you know, don't. If you treat me like an if you treat me like a noob, it's probably not going to be good because I might then I might do something that actually is real and <laughs> right. doesn't find out. So I basically am just like give me your best. Like just yeah. if I don't understand, I'm just explaining to me why I, I I believe you. Which is a good strategy. Very good, good good way to be. I think. Yeah. Um, so yeah. But yeah, oh, I guess yeah. No, that was my intro. It's pretty long. Yeah. I was gonna say, and then recently we went to the ATC together. Yes. Um, that was my first AOS team tournament. Um. We're going to be going to. Do we know what the one in Nashville is called? I, I think on. I think where I saw it advertised on AOS Coach Discord, it, they were just calling it Nashville Teams, which okay. is need a, a better name. Boring than that, name, or... yeah. It needs a better name than that for advertising. I'm not sure if it has a better name, um, but yes, hopefully we'll be going to that in February uh, to yep. the Bachelorette Party Capital of the World, uh, good old Nashville. Uh, by the way, I was telling Cora about how you uh, you guys thought it was weird that I knew that and yeah. we determined that you guys are idiots. Everyone should know that Nashville is the bachelor party capital. Look, man, I don't I don't know about culture or pop culture or things. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, com, com, comment on this video if if you knew that bachelorette parties in Nashville were extremely common. Look, I, I had seen the three other adults didn't know that. I'd seen like the big angel wings on the wall that like everyone mm -hmm. you know, all the women take pictures with, but like I didn't know that was in Nashville. But like when you said that, I was like, okay, this makes perfect sense. Yeah. I, I and that now it's becoming the bachelor party too. It's just bachelor bachelor parties in Nashville. It's the thing. Excellent. Um, so yeah, so I you know, similar to you, I, I played in bragging rights back in fantasy and Ultimate Team Showdown in Malifo, and uh, I went to ATC American Team Championships um, AOS uh, last year in Chattanooga, and then this year as well. Um, we will not be going back next year, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, but before we get into that, um, I just want to talk about what, what in your opinion is the thing that makes a team tournament fun, like compared to just playing a singles tournament? Cause I think team tournaments yeah. are like peak Warhammer. I, I love team tournaments. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to punt a little bit and not pick sure. one thing. I'm going to list several things cause I don't sure. want to pick. Yep, that's fair. So one, it's just the camaraderie of going with your buds, right? Yes. Um, you're counting on each other. They're counting on you. Yep. You're more motivated because, you know, I went to Nova a couple weeks ago and I didn't mm -hmm. prepare and I did shitty and whatever, but I didn't I didn't feel bad. Yep. I had no pressure. Right. Um, in a team tournament, you know, I, I'm more motivated uh, to to be prepared and to try hard. Um, there is some bad with that too. Sometimes people do poorly and they feel really bad. That's kind of the, the downside. But if you like the little bit of pressure, then it's good. And I mean, the other thing I would say too is, is an aside, mm -hmm. um, go with people that have similar goals to you. That's yes, probably one of the most absolutely. important things. You do not want to be the one fluffy, like thematic player who just wants to like play their favorite units on a team with like three super tryhards who want to crush skulls and like win the tournament and same the other way you don't want to be like super competitive on a team of guys who are just there to like drink beer and have fun so yeah definitely got to find some some guys that you you fit in with their philosophy because i think both are valid approaches to team tournaments um <laughs> you know not everybody wants to go and and win some people do just want to go and have a good time although i think i think generally it seems like people are pretty competitive 
too open to any OS. Yeah. And I don't I don't think that's usually a problem. Um usually people know and it's kind of like obvious, right? But yeah. um it that would be my one word of advice. Um and then the couple other things I like is that it kind of makes a whole new meta around yes. things. Things that are good uh in singles might not be as good. Things that are bad in singles might be a lot better. Um I haven't put a lot of thought into this take, but as someone who recently got absolutely abused by a Seraphon list, um, and and when we were talking about it, and uh, as Jacob described, I think it's great describing it is Seraphon just punched down really well. They're probably like the fifth best army, but they get shit on by the four armies better than them, and they absolutely shit on every army below them. Yep. And it's really, really lame. Uh, so like they're never, they will probably. I'll take this hot take. They will probably never <laughs> win a tournament in their current state right now. Yep. If they ever play an OBR, um, no or or a, or even a regular OBR, I think they can still be. Sure. I think they can still lose to or so blight. They just mm-hmm. lose and they're out. Um, in a team tournament, if the other team doesn't have two of the armies that counter them, they're just going to do whatever they want and they're going to punch down on those on those poor unsuspecting yep. Slaness armies and such that just gets deleted <laughs> by mortal wounds. And and they might do really well. Sounds now, like you're speaking from experience. A little bit, yeah. Um, so there's a new meta, and then there's also there's more to play for. So you know, I played in in that uh, lizard man army, and I I kind of knew my only chance to win this game was to go in and uh, just to, to full yellow in early mm-hmm. and try and try and win. Like one of us is tabling the other by the end of turn two, and that's who wins. Right. Um, and that and that that was I think the right play in the singles tournament because losing by seven points in the singles tournament mm-hmm. is, means nothing. Yeah. But uh, in adult in a team tournament, you might want to do that. You might right. want to say, "I'm going to sit up in the other corner. I'm going to get as many points as I can. I know I'm going to lose, but I'm going to try to take that, you know, twenty to fifteen loss that with the twenty zero scoring system in a team tournament." is actually okay for my team. Like, right. they can still survive that. So yep. it's kind of like another element, kind of like another game within the game, too, that you can do. Like, I like I, I played in team tournaments where I got eight points out of 20, and my team was pumped with it. Yeah, Cause, right. Because, yeah, in a team tournament, like, getting getting one extra battle tactic in your game might be the difference between your team overall winning the round or not. So, like, yeah, it's... that That is an aspect I do, I do like a lot. Um, to... Yeah, so to to explain to some people who don't necessarily know how team tournaments are generally set up and why that makes sense. Um, so so the ATC was fairly typical. So generally you have four people on a team. I have seen some with five. Um, world, you know, world, and then Worlds is like eight, but let's discount that. Any any more local team tournaments probably going to be four people. Um, often there's like a restriction where you can't all take can all take the same army. Sometimes it's more restrictive in that, like, you can't take the same war scroll across two different players on the team. And then um, every round, you obviously get paired against another team of four people. And this is where, like, the this is where the like extra meta and extra strategy of a team tournament comes in. Is you have to determine who on each team is playing each other. So um, generally, people make like little cards and. Um, the way that the flow generally happens is each team will pick one army to be their like attacker army and put those face down so they're secret. Um, so you know, so the other team can't see when they're picking their attacker army. So then you would both reveal your attacker armies. Then so you've seen you've seen what your opponent's attacker army is. You need to pick two of your armies to be the defenders against them. So you basically pick two of your remaining three armies to set against the opponent's one attacker army that they've revealed. And your opponent does the same, and then the each each team picks one of those two armies that were sent over to go against their army they revealed first, and then the other one plays the unrevealed army. So essentially, you you each get to determine each team gets to determine two matchups from a pool of two two armies from each side. Um, so there's there's like a there's an extra meta just on top of the game of like. Like you were saying, like so, some things that might not win a singles event might be amazing in teams because it's a skew list that you know can blow up half the armies in the game, even though it loses to the other half. But then you can protect it 
in the pairings process from the armies that it'll be bad against. So like there's this whole the whole strategy like what do we show? What do we send across? Are we like trying to do mind games and trick them, which is usually thinking too hard and doesn't work. <laughs> uh, yeah. And the, the skew list often they also have to have two armies. They have to have two armies that can beat it. Like right. I said for Seraphon, like they have to have two of those armies that I yep. think are good versus it. And then there's still a little bit of guessing too. Right. Um on whether you where they put it, whether they hold it, put it across or 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 uh send it. Right. And they they might you might still juke them there. Uh yeah. so Yeah. And that's like I said, well, maybe we'll get, I'll, I'll make one aside about our ATC experience from this year, uh, which is that I think that's a, that's a place where we strategize badly. And I hate to admit it, but you were right <laughs> going into the tournament. Usually, yeah. um, so I played Null Myriad and we were like, all right, Null Myriad, you know, obviously it's very good against Starborn, um, which we were expecting a lot of Starborn. So we were like, ha we're going to like dictate the Starborn matchup because I have to worry about Null Myriad. But we didn't have we like we didn't have a second army that was like a solid win against Seraphon. So like you know the other team reveals their Seraphon and we're like, all right, we send Null Myriad over and another army, and they just pick the other army and none of our other armies are like amazing against Seraphon. So the Null Myriad pick was kind of pointless because rather than us like getting to pair it into Seraphon, everyone was obviously protecting their Seraphon from it, and then it wasn't you know, it was fine against other things, but like you know I played Corn. It, it was, no Myriad obviously does zero against corn, shit like that. Yeah, and they um, and I mean we also were thinking too, like okay, sure they can avoid it, but we'll get something else good out of it, and we probably did. It, it's hard to say exactly what we got by them doing it because it's a lot of what ifs and and et cetera. Yeah. But it didn't matter because we got twenty owed by Seraphon, so whatever we got, it was at <laughs> best an even trade, right? right. Like yep. <laughs> it was if, if we just got completely wiped by that Seraphon, nothing we could have gained by attempting to trap it was a net positive for us. So, yeah. Right. Um, so, yeah, so that, that whole extra layer of strategy is fun. Um, did, did you have other things or should I? Can you hear? I think I, I, think I listed, I think yeah. I listed three at this yeah. point, right? So, so, so long way around, but. yeah, right. I, I wanted to expand a little bit on the, the camaraderie thing too, um, sure. which is that, um, you know, obviously not everybody, I don't want to make assumptions, but you know, most people have like a gaming group, and so going to a singles tournament, like you know, there's probably going to be some people there that you are good friends with. But even if you're at the same tournament, there's only so much you know, there's only so much time to socialize between games, and like you're you're focused on your game. It's not like you're not paying attention to all your friends' games like during the round necessarily, unless you finish early. Um, so it's just it's it's like one one extra level of camaraderie having an explicit team that you're there with and playing with and like strategizing around and all of that stuff. And often these team tournaments will have like a like team sportsman, you know, whatever, best team spirit, whatever award um, that goes to the team, you know, who has like a banner and a mascot and t-shirts and whatever and buys their opponents beers is probably the best way to get that award. And, you know, drink can be fun, <laughs> but like there, there is that level. Like we, I, I was a little disappointed in myself this the past two years at ATC because like I didn't do the whole like making team shirts thing. I didn't do like that extra level of kind of fun effort stuff. I have um, a hot take on that. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't like the shirts. Don't I had, like it? I had, well, I've had so many of them and it's like I'm never wearing this again. Like right. I had a stack of team shirts. Like I liked it for ETC. <laughs> that's like, a for fair ETC, point. ETC it's good where it's like a, a country shirt. And that's cool. And also one of the cool things at ETC is, and I'm sure, I know they do it at Worlds now too, like people like trade shirts, like after like soccer players do after games and stuff. And it's really cool. Like I love all the, the shirts I've traded from other teams, but like my team Scorpio shirt that I got that Gurn made, which it was a super cool shirt, but it's like, where am I going to wear a shirt with this giant <laughs> Scorpius model out in real life now? You know, right. it's like, yeah. no, that, that is a very good point that it's cool the first time and then uh, suddenly you have eight shirts and you're like huh yeah the best is when we work. well the best is when we did bear team bear force one and we all got pastel colored polos because <laughs> it was like we had a theme we all right. had our pastel polos yeah but then i'm like i still wear my pink polo to work you know it looks good it was, it was a it was a useful thing to have not just like you right. know a shirt with a giant scorpius on it no that's it's that's a good strategy yeah like oh we're all gonna wear hawaiian shirts or something yeah something you might wear again is would yeah. definitely be my suggestion yeah fair enough um 
let's see, looking at my little outline here. Um, I was going to ask, do you have any, like, do you have any standout memories from team tournaments? Like a, a moment where something cool happened or like a particular triumph where like you all paired well and like won your games or like somebody won the game unexpectedly that they were supposed to lose and like won the round or just like I don't know, a particularly fun team tournament? Um, I probably have a lot of these. I could probably fill a whole video with these. I, I figured you probably have way more than uh, that. Though. Yeah. First one so... that comes to your head. Maybe two. Okay, um, I will do the first one that I'm going to try to explain as best I can without going too far back into like old fantasy rules and why they mattered. Sure. Um, I, I think we'll do a separate video on that. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, basically we were at, it was the first year I went to ETC. It was the first year there was ever an Amer a, a true American team there. And we, the first day, did pretty mid, like I'd say super mid. Um, we were in like 15th place out of 30 after the first day, but then the next day we, we, we were doing exactly really well. Mid, yeah, exactly. Uh, we crushed our first, our round four game and then round five, we got paired with Switzerland at like, I don't know, we probably would have been like in eighth this place. Um, and I got paired, I was playing demons. Uh, it all demons were together at the time. I was playing uh, a Vampire Counts guy, and this is back in the day where if you kill the guy's vampire, the whole army crumbled, and you basically <laughs> auto won. Maybe if it happened yes. in the last turn, they could survive, but it was really, really bad. Anyway, um, I'll skip the story, but basically I had a pretty, very unlikely set of events where my Nurglings just rolled a shit ton of poison attacks on this guy's vampire lord. Um, and they almost, he was down to like his like last wound. They spiked really high. Um, and it was also like closed list at the times too. So like, I didn't really know his list mm. and, uh, you know, I went to go attack again and he was like, oh my God, my guy is like immune to poison. And uh -huh. I was like, and it was one of those things I was like, I literally didn't know, like lists yeah. were close. There was no yeah. way I could have known, um, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So, you know, and it was like several turns later and we were just like, and it, this is a competitive thing. So we we're like, yeah, mm -hmm. like it sucks, man. But like, it's not even like I knew and didn't remind you. Like, right. I literally did not know your list. Yep. So anyway, so he, but he's like, okay, I'm feeling good now because you were killing me with poison. You're probably not going to get wounds because I like needed sixes to wound him anyway. I need like five okay. to hit sixes to wound him. Oh um, yep. So it was really hard for me to wound him otherwise. Yep. Um, anyway, I, I had these little smiley face dice and I, I like, <laughs> I had like a couple attacks and I got one six through and then I got another, I like one hit and I rolled another six and he failed. He had like a four up, four up save. He failed it. He died game over um but this was like in the first like this was in like the first hour so like i won mm -hmm. i told my old team we're winning and then i got to do the thing which is probably not common in like four-man team tournaments but you often have like a non-playing coach uh a captain mm -hmm. in a uh in an eight-man team who can kind of walk around and like i don't know how they do it for aos actually at worlds but for fantasy you allow to say certain things you are like hey so-and-so's winning so-and-so's losing mm -hmm. um you can you should go for a big play here or you should play it safe or etc sure. and then they eventually like the coach can't come in and play the game for you but they can be like oh hey like you only need a small win so just like don't take a big risk or something yeah yeah exactly and they actually eventually did it for etc i don't know if they do this for worlds but every player would get like one i think three minute timeout mm -hmm. where you actually could talk to the coach about anything you want gotcha. like you could say like hey move these guys here mm -hmm. do this flee this charge that's not a thing anymore you know <laughs> go for this charge move them here go for this play and like plan it all out right. um like you could only do that once per game and it was only for a couple minutes. But yeah, it was it anyway, it was really fun. We didn't have a non-playing coach that year because it's our first year. But like after that, we realized like, hey, this is really helpful. It really helps your team. Mm -hmm. So I got to do that. Um and then I guess the next thing to I'll tie the story all together is sure. um we, we won the round big. We got to play Denmark on I guess we were technically on table two in the last round. Um, but, uh, Denmark was in first place. They had played the two teams in second and third already. So they played down to fourth, which was us. We played them on table two. Uh, it was a really close round. We, we ended up going down pretty big, but we had a lot of games that were really close and, um, they ended up winning our ETC, but we were just really, that was not the highest finish that mm -hmm. America ever had at ETC. We finished in like 10th, but in my opinion, that was the closest we ever got. Um, yeah to a good finish because we were sure. there because you lost we were... to the first place team in the last round 
Yeah, and we could have, if we had won there, we would have made the podium. Uh, we obviously didn't, so it doesn't count. But, you know, it was it was fun. And, like, we were all just real inspired. Like, we were, mm-hmm. we were really pumped after yep. that. So that was more than one moment, but. Sure. No, no, it's a good story. Um, it, it's funny. I, so I was trying to think of an answer to this question. And one of the things, one of the things I was always impressed by in like fantasy and Malfo is like you and a couple of our other friends who've like gone to ETC and things like, I feel like, like, I feel like you, you all could like pull out a memory of like something that happened in a game from like five years ago. And I'm like, man, I can't remember what I did on Saturday. <laughs> like, I, I mean, definitely don't remember like shit like that from gaming. And I feel like I've, I feel like I like getting more into competitive AOS and like taking notes of my games and things. Like, I feel like I'm at that point with AOS now where I'm like, oh yeah, I remember like, you know, I was at, I was on the top table at this little one day tournament a year and a half ago. And like, I remember turn four, this thing happened and blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, I mean, do you want to know how long ago that story was to make you feel real old? Yes, I do. It was 13 years ago. Yep. It's 2010. Oh, 2010. So, so right after we graduated from college, I guess, that summer? Yeah, I used I used the money my grandparents gave me for graduating <laughs> college to buy my plane ticket. Amazing. That is that is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, yeah, that, that, well. yeah, for sure. Um yeah, I guess my point there is I don't know that I have like a good I don't have a good like team tournament story. Wasn't the wasn't the pocket burrito at a team tournament? Mm, I feel like that was at the, like Ultimate Team Showdown or something. The, Larry's the pocket po- burrito. The pocket burrito was in Alex's basement, Alex's parents' basement, practicing mm. for ETC twenty fourteen. See, anyway, the. Then- the sour cream burrito story, which ah, uh, see, I'm mixing up multiple Chipotle burrito stories, which I don't even want to go into here. Um, <laughs> Fair enough. That was at a regular tournament in I Providence. See. Got it. It was at Captain Con, or not Captain Con. Um, what was it called? Temple Con is what it was called before that. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, anyway, I hope to have I hope to have good team tournament stories uh, <laughs> after after Nashville. Um, so. I think I think this is enough just chattering about team tournaments being cool. Um, let's talk about since this is supposedly a show about AOS. Uh, let's talk about the one AOS team tournament we've been to together, uh, ATC, the American Team Championship in Chattanooga, and break the down the Noog. Yes, the Noog. We went full Noog. Um, had to, had to drive one full Noog to get there, which turns out is twelve hours, which is horrible. Yeah. Despite being told it was eight, it is actually twelve. <laughs> um, yeah. So, ATC. So I went. I went two years. I went twenty twenty two. The first year, I think they were back after the pandemic, and then this year, um, with largely the same group. Um, but you you were here this year instead of one person uh, on our team for yeah. last year, um, who yeah, did end up going team. anyway um, on a different team. Um, so it was fun. Um, team tournaments are always good, but there were some definite large issues with ATC both years, and I figured we could use that as a. I figured we could use discussing that as an opportunity to like discuss how to like what like what makes a team tournament a success. Like, what do you need to do as an organizer or whatever to like ensure that you're running a successful team tournament? Um, so so other than other than it being far away in Chattanooga, um, <laughs> there were, I feel like there were a few issues here. So ATC is a huge 40k event, first of all, yeah, like, like 640k players. Yeah, so yeah, there were there were there were at least 540k players there on five person teams. Um, I think. Oh no, I guess no, I, I think they said it was 350 actually, but still. Yeah, no, you're right. There, there was like there were like 75 40k teams, and they were like five yeah. person teams. Yeah. Um, Either way, so it's a very huge, large number. Yeah. So it's a huge 40k event, and I think part of it, part of the issues with ADC is that the AOS event feels like a bit of an afterthought. Like it's a huge room full of 40k players, and we're like off in a little corner. And I don't know if the organizer has like more of a direct hand in running the 40k event. I think he must. But for AOS, both years, it was very much like. At, at least, at least as far as I could tell from the outside, it was very much like, oh, 
ATC is like a month away and I haven't gotten an AOS TO and like, I'm not going to TO AOS. So I need to find a TO and like had to find someone like extremely last minute to like pull this shit show together into something resembling a decent AOS tournament. So like two months, you know, two months before the AOS tournament in 2022, the rules packet literally had rules from like second edition AOS, which was multiple years out of date at that point. So like, the person, you know, the person putting together the packet obviously just recycled the packet from like 2019, the last time they had run it. And like, I don't know, didn't even know there was a new edition of Age of Sigmar. Um, so tournament packs are, are pretty important. I, yeah, um, and it's important to have them like a like a reasonable amount of time ahead of time before the tournament too. Yeah, I uh, I ran a tournament from Alpha. It wasn't a team tournament; it was just a regular tournament, but uh. So I put a lot of time into that tournament pack, like made sure that it was like I read it over like seven times, even though I hate proofreading stuff. Like I, I read it more than I read an email I would send to at work, you know, yep. for something important. So Noble it's, yeah, well, it's important because it it's kind of your like almost your how almost a get get out of jail free card, but it's your mm -hmm. like fallback. If anyone ever complains or about any, you can be like it was in the pack. Right. Yeah. If yeah. you can point to the pack and be like, you should have read the pack better. You're like. You're, you're good. Yeah. But what you don't want, it, the, on the other hand, though, it's also the gotcha that can get you. Because if mm -hmm. someone brings up the pack and says, well, the pack says this. <laughs> and sure, you've forgotten it's the TO, then I guess you're screwed. Yeah. Sure. You can do the thing where you're like, okay, um, no. And, and you, you might need to in certain times. But like that's just not the position you want to be in as the sure. TO. Yeah. For so. sure. Yeah. So that was an issue. I will say both years. <laughs> The person who at the last minute stepped in to be the TO, I, I can only assume they got paid. Um, did as I, I wouldn't assume that. Maybe. I mean, hopefully, but I don't, I don't know. I, I hope. Well, okay. Might have. So I know. All right. So the first 2022, James O'Brien stepped in and ran it. And he runs events like as a pseudo part time GW employee, I believe. Like he runs things for GW. So, um, you know, the guy who runs ATC Shane was. A, Apparently, like contacting GW, like asking for a TO, like three weeks before the event or something, and and James stepped in at the last minute and did what he could to pull it together. So I assume James didn't get paid, or or if he got paid by like GW or something for for doing this. Um, yeah. This year, um, a guy named Carl, for, who I guess runs tournaments down in Florida, ran it um, and did a decent job. I have no idea if he got paid. Maybe maybe this was out of the goodness yeah. of his heart, and he came up with some people from his club who played in the. Yeah. In the I, I hope I hope he did. I just I don't know. Yeah, I hope I, he did. Yeah. Um, part of this whole last minute thing. Um, also bad thing. Uh, I I probably the hardest part of a tournament, running a tournament, is having enough good terrain for all of the tables. And the terrain 2022 at ATC was just hot smoking garbage. Like this was like this was like hills made out of packing foam that somebody made for Warhammer Fantasy in like 2005 that like they pulled out of the basement to throw on tables for this AOS train. Like it was not acceptable. <laughs> it was just not good. It was awful. And um, it, it was much better this year because Carl, uh, the TO from Florida who ended up TOing, brought rain up from Florida, um, which I keep thinking is like insanely far away from Chattanooga, but, but it's probably not any further yeah. than... Maryland is from Chattanooga. Turns um, out when you drive 12 hours, you can get pretty far. Indeed, indeed. Um, so yeah, so the terrain was an issue 2022 less this year. Just the the last minute TO stuff was a mess. Um, I would I would say on the terrain thing too, like mm -hmm. it's not necessarily like, that's the barrier to entry for anyone running a tournament. Yes. I would say that's that's like the biggest like gatekeeping thing. Yep. Um, when I ran a tournament from Alpha, I was super lucky. I had a bunch of friends. You bought terrain. Gurren bought terrain. Nick bought terrain. John P bought terrain. Yeah. Like e pretty much everyone that I was friends with bought me terrain <laughs> right. to help. It, it was it was a total community effort, and th there's absolutely no way I could have had enough terrain to do that on my own. So like yep. that's a pretty huge deal. Um, and it, the, the nice part is if you have it or you like buy it or make it and have a place to store it, you have it for the next year. But it's definitely the big barrier of entry for anyone yeah. ever wanting to run a tournament. So I feel like this is uh, I feel like this is like the gateway drug, like like people was talking about in 
chat about regiments of Renown today. Like, oh, you get this nice little this little, this little group of units that you can use for four hundred points in another army, and like at that point, you only ha you you have a quarter of an army. You might as well build that out to the rest of the army. I feel like that's that's like the gateway drug for TOs. Like, all right, I managed to get enough terrain together to hold this tournament. I guess I better hold another goddamn tournament because what else am I going to do with all this terrain? Um, I don't know. Anyway, um, yeah, I, w one of the other. All right, so so more more things about ATC. Um, last year there were fourteen teams, and like, obviously, just massively, absurdly smaller than forty k. But like, fourteen teams was like reasonable. Like, you know. Play, we played four rounds, like, you know, you have a pretty clear winner. It's enough teams that, like, like we went with three teams, I think, from our group in Maryland, and, like, 14 is enough that, like, maybe you can get away without playing another team that you drove 12 hours <laughs> with. Yeah. Um, this year, so it was the, only eight. Yeah, so the teams. problem there that okay. is a real problem is the, I think, combinatorics is the right word. Mm-hmm. It for doing pairings with that few teams gets really rough. It does in, in like out. the last round, especially yeah. when you know obviously each team has played three other teams at that point, and there's only four left that you could possibly pair with. Yeah, yeah. The combin combinatorics is the right word. That does get real difficult and like almost starts to break down. Mm -hmm. So, and, like for example, the team yes. at ATC, or ATC this year, the team in first place had to play the team in fourth place. Uh, because they had already but, beaten the second and third teams, I think, right? Yes. They no. They sorry. They had to play a team in fifth place because they had already beaten second, third, and fourth at that point. Right. So they paired way down. Yes. And then second and third have to play each other because that's the next highest pairing. Right. And then our team was in fourth, and we paired all the way down to. We had played the team in sixth. Right. So we played all the way down to seventh. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and the teams in second and third were like upset about this, right? Because I mean, like, they weren't like they, they were they upset, under, but but they were like, oh, this kind of sucks. Yeah, and no, right. Like, like exactly. the, the carries yeah. worked out in like the shittiest possible fashion for them because, like, you know, they're sitting in second and third. If they play anybody else in the tournament, you know, they're probably solid to podium, but they had to play each other. So, like, one of them is getting knocked off the podium, like for sure. And then because we had to play so far down, even though we were in fourth at the time, like we were probably wow. going to get enough points to be in second at the end of the day. Um, unfortunately, the other issue with only having such a small number is <laughs> yet another thing that went wrong was that when you only have eight teams, it's, it's a big problem if somebody drops from the tournament. And I would argue it's always a problem. It's always a problem. Sure. A team it's always a problem tournament. for a team tournament, especially. Um, like, I don't even like people dropping in singles, but I get it. Like, if it's a singles tournament with 60 people and one person drops, like, day two or round five, like, whatever, it happens. Um, it's probably not affecting the outcome of the tournament in any significant fashion because it's usually people down near the bottom that are dropping. But yeah, at ATC this year, two of the eight teams just bailed early and were like, we don't want to play round four. One of them at least told the TO this and was like, hey, we're dropping, like we're going to bail. It was still lame and shitty because they were going to play one of the other Maryland teams and we all drove 12 goddamn hours and paid $100 each to play in this tournament to go and end up playing three games, one of which was against each other. Like just awful, like value for money there. And not, not max value. Not max value at all. I would even say min value. And the other team that dropped didn't even tell the TO. This was the team that we were supposed to play. Did not tell the TO they were dropping. I was like walking into the hall for round four and saw three of them walking out of the hall. One of whom had their like army like in their pack, like on their back. Like they had like the ba you know, backpack army case thing. So, so I'm like walking in and I see them walking away and I was like, that's weird. Like. Maybe they're just running out for like, you know, trying to grab a real quick lunch before the round starts or like whatever, but like kind of weird that the person has their their army on their back. Like I, I hope they're not leaving because I want to play the last game. So so yeah, the fourth round is like it's time to start and they are nowhere to be found. They haven't 
told anyone they were dropping. Like three of their armies were still sitting on one of the you know the tables, not not the tables we play on, but like one of the tables just behind. Um, and so I'm like, what the hell is going on? And at that point, our friend Gern's like, you know, our team dropped. Like, but we had our, we like we had already played Gern's team, so it's not like if our two opponents both dropped, we could then play each other because we'd already played. We play each other all the time at home. Like we won't, don't want to do that. So then we had to figure out what to do. Cause like you said, the pairings first place had to play like fifth down to fifth, the second and third place, we're going to play each other. And then we're suddenly like out of an opponent. Like we don't have anybody to play. And if we had gotten to play the team we were supposed to like quite honest, we were better than them. We were probably going to beat them and like jump up to second. So like it was this whole drama of like, what is the fair thing to do here? Like, what do we do? We basically worked out with the TO. Our, our team captain worked out with the other captains and the TO, like, hey, we'll just take third place. Like, that is... Well, we didn't say it like that. We sure. Said, yeah, no, no, no. We, we said we think we Correct. can get a 52-point win. Yes. Pretty right. easily. Yes. Like, it, out of 80, like, that was not that big of a win. It was a pretty small win. And yep. based on common opponents... Captain like, 60, though. Yeah. So we said we'll get, you know, we think we can get a 52 point win. And that that happened to be the number that would, you know, get us in the third. And we obviously knew that when we said it, but we we, we honestly I, I do think that we would have gotten that. Is it was it a guarantee? Absolutely not. Anything can happen. Yep. But I think it was pretty likely that we would have gotten that. So for sure. Yeah. Were you were you actually in that discussion like when the captains were chatting, no. like right. Uh, like, dude, right. I was, I was, embra- I was embracing the chaos at that point. I was just, like, <laughs> I, um, I, I was just gonna, I was gonna put a disclaimer, like disclaimer to everyone listening. Like I was not in the, I was not in the captains' meeting when they were discussing all of this. I like know what the outcome was, obviously, but like I wasn't in the meeting, so like I don't know what the details of the discussion and negotiation was. But yeah, we were, we uh, were I, also like, well, if we don't have an opponent to play, like it would be great to get on the road earlier and get home and start driving. So like, you know, let's just agree. Give us our hammer, little hammer prizes, and like we'll we'll just get well, out of here. Well, the other problem too was, since the other team didn't tell us, we couldn't. We okay. So the original team that said they were dropping, there was going to be like a ringer team that was going to get put together to play oh, games. Right. Yes. But the other team didn't tell us that right. they were dropping. So yeah. our opponents, that was our opponents. Our yep. opponents were, like I said, they didn't tell us. So we had to. We were waiting for them to come back, and once we right. finally realized they weren't coming back, in order to redo the pairings, we've had to we every single pairing would have changed except for the first, the yeah. first place one, yeah. which, and the other teams already started playing because yeah, right. they wanted to move on and like it was time, right? So and like once, finish the tournament on a Sunday afternoon when we all have hours and hours to drive home. Yeah. So once they got once that like kind of realization happened, it was it was too late too. Yeah. So anyway, it, it ended up. It ended up. The negotiation was that we were gonna take third. The TO ended up. Yeah. You know, TO was like, let's you know wait the full wait the full amount of time that the pack said. Yeah. Let's go back to before the you forfeit pack. the round. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So the, the tournament pack was like, oh, you know, if you show up fifteen minutes late, it's like a whatever. It's like points penalty or something. And then if you show up. Yeah. 45 minutes late, you know, whatever it is. You show up 45 minutes late, you've like you've you've forfeited the round. Yeah. But he was so like, he was like, let's do that, because that's that's kind of his like get out of not get out of Jeffrey, but again, yep, that's his but, like no one can bitch about this in the rules. You agree. Exactly. And well, right. And that was the other thing about the negotiation is by the tournament pack, if they forfeit the match, we just get full our full 60 points for the round, which would definitely make us second. <laughs> And I mean that the way the math works out, but we were like, right. we were like, look, we're not like, we don't want to take second and not play a game. Like, we will just take third. So, like, I don't think it was greedy for us to be like, just give us third and we'll leave. <laughs> I think it was a reasonable compromise. Yeah, I, I personally didn't care where we finished, I, I but either at oh. that point, but it, if. We, I like I wanted to place well, but like I wanted to do that by playing a game. It was just it was a no win scenario. Like it was gonna yeah, feel bad. Either, like any way it happened, it was gonna feel bad because we didn't get to play a fourth game. Like it was gonna suck for somebody, no matter how it all worked out. Um, and then 
so we're like, we had worked out with the TO, like, this is how we're handling this. This is the plan, yada, yada. And then I guess the TO was like, all right, I should like, I should just out of politeness, run this by the overall ATC organizer, Shane. And like, we're like getting ready to go. Like we're going to grab, grab our trophies and, and bail and start driving. And then apparently, at, you know, at the 12th hour, whatever that phrase is, at the last minute, hour. at the last minute, it sounded like Shane was going to like totally override like what the captains and the TO had agreed on as the like, you know, overlord of ATC. So we're like, what the fuck? Like, we had worked this all out. We all decided it was fair enough. Like, we were going to go home. So it ended up, like, we couldn't we couldn't take our trophies when we left. Like, we left early to start driving home. They were like, you can't take the trophies with you. And so we were also like, like, we're gone now. They might just cut a different deal now that we're not there. So... Our, our friends were, you know, our friends who stayed till the end until the award ceremony were trolling us a little bit and we're like, oh yeah, they decided to like not give you anything. But we, we did end up getting third by, you know, we, what was it? We were two and one at that point as a team in, in team pairings. And so we, we, we were likely going to end up three, one, we ended up taking third, but it was just, it was such a mess. It was such a shit show. There were only, like I said, it was down from 14 teams to eight teams. And I can't imagine that the teams that were there this year are going to come back after two years of there being a shit show. Cause like a bunch of, I, I don't, you know, none of us from Maryland are going to go. So there is suddenly three teams out of eight are gone. Like you can't run a team tournament with five teams. You're just doing a round robin at that point and It sucks. And it's not fun for anybody. So um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the fate of AOS ATC will be for next year, but I'm excited for, uh, for Nashville. <laughs> yeah, so that that gets me my other thing, and this is sure. for any tournament, but especially team tournaments. You got to advertise. You got to put the word out. Yes, yes. Like, like I said, it 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 makes your job a lot harder with less teams. Like, it yeah. literally is more work because, like I said, that kind of stuff can happen. The pairings become a problem down at the at the bottom, not at the yeah. bottom, but and that small numbers, the combinatorics suck. Yeah. So, yeah, and it, I it, sorry, go ahead. Oh, it also just like. It protects you as a TO too. Like people will drop. There's always going to be drops. There might be last minute drops. Like mm -hmm. the more of a padding you have there, like yeah. well, yeah, and, and that's too. the thing. Even even like I think even a couple weeks before the tournament this year, we thought there was going to be like eleven teams, and that dropped down to eight. Like probably a couple of people dropped because they saw that it was going to be small and they didn't yeah. want to do it. Yeah, it, it's a definitely and it just kind of snowballs. Yeah, it's like it's just the the death knell that cascades yeah. into awfulness. Yeah, I don't want to go because there's only nine teams. So then you have eight teams, and then someone else says, "I don't want to go yep. because there's only eight teams." Yep. Yep. Yeah, and I don't know if that I don't know if it's just such a big event in the 40k community that they're like, we don't even need to advertise it because like everybody in 40k knows that they want to go to ATC every year. But like, it's not super well known in the US community. And yeah, you, you got to advertise your tournaments. Um, the tournament I won over the a couple months ago, Goonhammer only had like 15 people. And again, that was like, it, this, it just was not super well advertised. I feel like you got to hit up like the big discords, you know, I guess you have to advertise on Facebook. You, you know, I, it seems like there's a big AOS community on Twitter. Like you just got to be hitting hitting the rounds and making sure people know about your tournament, especially for like the first couple of years. Like if you've been running yeah. a tournament for two years and it's a successful event and like word spreads, people are like, I know this is a cool event. I want to go. And like, at that point you're kind of solid, but yeah. Can't yeah, start a new I, event and not advertise it. Yeah. The way I described it um, when I was running my Malifaux tournament was like the first couple years, like you're going to have to like actively recruit people. But from there, like good tournaments will get people. Like if you wanna if you get enough people and you want a good tournament, they'll tell people and then you aren't gonna have to tell people anymore. But that beginning, like you absolutely have to just like the first year I ran, uh Capital City Meltdown was the name of the tournament I ran. The first year I ran that, I think I I think I got thirty people. Hmm. I, I wanna say I got thirty. Which but is a like, pretty good size for a singles tournament, really. For Malifa too, a much smaller yeah. game. I mean, twenty of those people I probably like messaged <laughs> sure. like, can you yes. come to this event? Um, you know, the next year I had a message like 10 people. And then the last year, 
I think I got 40 some. I think I got 46 or something. I it was like the biggest Malfo tournament I think um that year. But like I I didn't have to advertise like at all very much. Yeah. Like <sighs> Yeah, tournaments yeah. on these. Um, so yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I, yeah, summary ATC <laughs> All sorts of problems. It was still a good time, but you know, not not it wasn't a good time because of the ATC organizers themselves, I don't think. And and I'm not including the, the last minute TO who stepped in to run uh run things in that. It was a good time because we went with a group of guys that we know, we played fun opponents, team tournaments, team Warhammer is just like inherently fun to me. Like it was a long ass drive, but like I made a little, you know, I made a little chart so that on the way down we could talk about pairing. But I had some colored pens and was like, "All right, this army." And we had the list at that point. So I'm like, "Is this green for you? Is this yellow for you? Is this red for you?" You know, kill kill two hours of our twelve hour drive that way. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. But, I just tried a couple of calls and calls when you're drinking calls. Yeah. Uh, the good news is. Nashville is much easier to fly to and much cheaper to fly to than Chattanooga. So I don't know if it is cheaper, cheaper. but it is easier. Well, I, I can fly direct there on Southwest, which I could not do to Chattanooga, which yeah, is my metric I, I, because I can just use points. <laughs> yeah, I almost went there last year for a hockey tournament. And I remember looking at tickets and being like, holy crap, this is kind of expensive. Plus, and you, up... you, could, you could also just hitchhike on a stretch limo full of bachelorette partiers. True. But so it's it, really easy it, to get there. It was, so like I said, it was, it's still expensive, but it's a lot more convenient. The problem with Chattanooga yes. flying is the flights were both inconvenient and expensive. They were all at, right. ridic- at, at very inconvenient times. Non-direct flights. Had, like, non-direct flights, yeah. Yeah. Nashville, and, and like you could fly into Atlanta oh. instead, but then it's still like an hour and a half, two hour drive to Chattanooga from there. It's just like, it doesn't mess. Yeah. No, it definitely, Nashville is a lot easier to fly to. Like I said, I do think the flight will probably be like 500 bucks, but at least it will like, you know, take me directly there. Yeah. I think the only, so, so the, by the way, everyone listening, the, the player pack for the Nashville team event is out. Um, you go on AOS Coach Discord, which I just kind of assume everyone is on, <laughs> even if you aren't frequently there. Um, there's a there's a North America channel section, and under that there's a North America events like list of events and threads. And so there's a Nashville teams um, post there that has a link to the tournament pack. Um, it looks pretty decent so far. I the only thing the only weird thing on there so far is. Um, and, you know, they have a stipulation that like no duplicate um, war scrolls, but also like enhancements and things like battalions between the teams. And I, it sounds like that means like no only only one person on the team can have a battle regiment, which is a little weird because like so much of AOS, I believe, like so much of list building AOS is like I want to be low drops. Um, I mean, you can, I mean, you might see multiple battle regiments in the same army. Yeah, right. So so it would be a little weird if like only one player per team can take like the core battalions. Um, but I don't know. We'll, I'm sure we'll get a clarification on that before the, the tournament. Um, yeah, I can see doing like, I don't know, I might just take the battalions out and take it out all together. Um, and I think it's being run by Jacob Berry. Do you know him? I yeah. remember you know him from like I know him. back in the day. Yeah, he was a he was a fantasy player. Um, I think I met him for the first time at the first U.S. Fantasy Masters, and then I went out to Hendel's tournament, Quake City Bumble in San Francisco in 2015, I think. And I don't think I think he just helped Hendel on that. I don't think he played in that one. I think he just like was you know helping him because it was a pretty big tournament. So you kind of need two people. I'm um, gonna hang out with him a lot there. But no, I really like him. He moved, He lives in Nashville now. Gotcha. So yeah, I definitely um, have full faith in him. Sweet. Um, it'll be it'll be good. Excellent. Yeah, everybody listening, go to go to Nashville teams. Hope to see you there. Um, yeah, I think it's probably a good time to wrap up this discussion. Um, I feel like there's one or two things I I probably missed that I meant to mention, but that's fine. Um, I would like to chat at some point just about like like 
there are people in our AOS group who like never played fantasy, which is weird to us. Cause like, like you said, we started playing fantasy in like 2000 <laughs> fifth edition when we were in like middle school. Um, uh, it was 1999, 99. Yeah. So I, I feel like it would be fun to just like do a, do a 45 minute chat of just like the top 10 rules from fantasy that like people in AOS would, it would just blow their minds. And the one you mentioned today, like the, the vampire counts, you know, the equivalent of sublight grave lords in fantasy. Like, if you kill the vampire counts general, their whole their whole army just dies. Like, that is a great one. Like, that is, that just sounds absurd to anyone playing these days. Imagine mm -hmm. if those hundred and sixty zombies all just automatically died if you killed the vampire lord. I'm at, imagine if at the end of every battle round you rolled two dice and subtracted two, and that's how many zombies died. Yeah. Fantastic. It actually probably wouldn't even matter for zombies. That you they actually they probably still be fine. <laughs> yeah, so there's whatever. forty in the unit. It's, yeah, it, it's it's no big deal. Um, so and there's less turns in the game too. There's with six in fantasy. So true, true. God, oh man, I, I actually I forgot about that. All right. Yeah. Anyway, let's let's save these. Thank you for coming uh, on, Travis. It's always a pleasure sure. to talk to you. And uh, you all mean that, but I appreciate it. Fair, fair. Look, I'm being polite for the stream. <laughs> yep. All right. See ya. Do it for the views.